Hello, I'm Si Shangase and this is SEO in 2024. See so what's your number one SEO tip for 2024? It's a good question. I would say that for SEOs to start embracing AI and to learn how to do prompt engineering, I think that's going to be a critical thing for the next couple of years, particularly for seasoned SEO veterans. For the next couple of years, you say, and then it doesn't matter after that? Well, who knows where AI can take us in the next couple of years? <laughs> Maybe the seasoned veterans. <laughs> why, why do SEOs need to definitely embrace AC, um, AI now? So I'll, I'll give you an example. So I, I, imagine you are maybe like an SEO strategist or you can, you're an SEO manager, for instance. I'd say agency and also in-house. There's a couple of things that you might not be able to do. So you might need a team to support you on building a piece of interactive content. and you might require dev resources internally and, and, and that could be a challenge. So for instance, if you learn how to use, you know, prompt engineering and also GPT engineer effectively, then you can actually start to build those applications or programs that can allow you to so sort of create an interactive content as an SEO. And on top of that as well, there's other elements such as you know, it's very difficult these days to actually get the right resources that you need, particularly, especially sometimes at a junior level as well. And AI can help you do a lot of the heavy lifting and it allows you to focus more on the strategy side um, of your SEO campaign. So that's, uh, yeah, that's how I see it. So you talked about prompt engineering and um, chat GPT. Um, are, are those the two key or oh, skills and software that you need to use, or there, is there any other AI s software that uh, an SEO needs to know as well? I think the main thing is to start right there. So the first thing is to actually understand your processes. So for instance, let's just take a step back and think about what are the main things that an SEO does a lot. It's, it's keyword research. So you, you, if it, basically we all know how to use Majestic, we all know how to use Hrefs, we all know how to use SimRush and so forth. Yeah. And I'll stop name dropping there, but the main thing is to learn how to clean up your data, first of all, and then learn what you need from your data, essentially, and then start to put those into prompts. Once you've done that, I think that's almost half the job done, effectively. So I'd say the main, the main sort of tools that you need is a process of your day-to-day -day activity or tasks. Get those written down. And then you can basically scale those up. Lovely. I mean, let's highlight those three key areas that you that you mentioned there. Clean up your data, use your data, and put into prompts. So starting with clean up your data. Um, so are you primarily talking about keywords that you're going to target? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so let's give you so let me give you an example. Say you download a list of keywords from that's, that's like a competitor analysis essentially. So you might be using a to any third-party SEO tool can give you a list of keywords that your competitors are actually ranking for that you're not ranking for. And then you can use a tool, you know, OpenAI's chat GPT tool effectively to download or upload that list of keywords onto the platform and then ask it to filter out any keywords that you think are not going to be relevant for your campaign. So that would be the first step in terms of how to clean up that information and that data. And one of the things that I tend to do is to create classifications. So you can cr ask it to create semantic or uh, group keywords into semantic relevance. And when you group it into semantic relevance, it allows you to understand what are the different type of content entities that you need to create for your landing pages. Say maybe you're doing something around maybe holidays, for instance. When you group your keywords into semantic relevance, you can see things such as the best time to visit. You can see things such as when you can go to a specific place or things to do. So your keywords could be grouped in those semantic buckets and AI can help you do that at scale. So if you're looking at like hundreds and thousands of keywords, you can do that within a minute where it would have taken you a week or more. 
And and how is ChatGPT grouping those keywords into semantic relevance? And and can you trust that data? Can you trust the way it does it? There's a lot of basically when you when you do your prompt, the first thing that you need to do, you need to ask it to give you an example. So it gave you a sample of how the output should look. And then it's up to you to refine how the output looks. So you got to think about it as if you are training someone who is effectively got experience in SEO, but not as highly experienced as somebody who's had probably several years of SEO practice, essentially. So as the AI is actually giving you a prompt and example, it's up to you to just tell it to make slight minor adjustments and refinements before you actually print out the outputs in a CSV file, particularly with the new um, GPT-4 upgrade that gives you a downloaded CSV file, essentially, if you are going to be using the chat GPT um, interface. And you've obviously got all these keywords in semantic relevance. Next step after that, I guess, is creating content. So do you use AI for that as well? This is a hard one. I think I think there are people who are using like AI to like create content. But but if you, if you are going to do that, what you need to really learn how to do is to 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 actually have the right tone. To so give it a specific tone in terms of how we should write the content. So, for instance, you need to ask AI to give you a persona, and you need to also basically tell it what their persona should be like and the tone of voice that the person should take on and maybe it might be a good idea as well when you are giving it that prompt to give it an example of how you would write as a human and then it would basically use your example maybe your word doc of like four thousand words your example to actually learn how to write as as you effectively you cloning yourself if you are a copywriter or content writer but as they always say never get an seo to write your content for you or just get a, a copywriter content writer so what it can do, actually, it can allow you to really make a start on the content that you want to create. And then effectively, I would say, and I would recommend that you have a skilled writer actually going through that content and actually, or copy, making sure that there aren't any errors in it, that it is, it reads the way that you need it to read. So I wouldn't fully embrace creating all your copy through using AI, I would say that probably about 60% of it, you could start uh, using AI to, to help you do that. So one of the things could be maybe meta descriptions, um, maybe less, they are important from a CTI perspective, but they're not important from a ranking perspective. So you could test that and see what uh, the output is. And then you could s- start to look at effectively, maybe thinking about maybe description copy, landing page copy if you are an e-commerce website that could be something that you can think about as well but yeah it, it does really depend on your use case and i think that writing a full four thousand word article using the ai sometimes from my experience and what i've tested it doesn't come out the way that you'd like it to come out and there's a lot of manual tweaking and it still does create a bit of work so talking about cloning yourself replacing yeah. humans with ai One of the things that you said earlier on was that um, you were using AI to replace some of the work traditionally done by SEO juniors. Um, So, I mean, what does that mean for, I guess, the people getting into the profession? I think that if you're going into the profession, I think that the learning curve could be shortened. I think that's a positive way to look at it. I think that, say, for instance, if you are doing keyword research, you could actually have AI help you perform the keyword research task, and you can have AI help you perform a large semantic uh, clustering task effectively. And I think it could shorten that that learning curve if you can uh, learn to 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 work with a tool, an LLM, basically a large language model, and learn how to use it to your advantage from an SEO perspective. And I think that's probably the best use case. I'd say if you coming into the space, I would say they definitely decide to embrace it because it gives you more, a better competitive advantage than, than the rest of your peers. So is SEO leading the way that AI is used within the marketing function 
or are there other channels, other departments that um, are using AI in different ways that SEO can also learn of? It's a good question. I think within sort of businesses that I've worked with, I think w- what I am saying is, is that it's actually helping with ad copy. It's helping with creating ideas for um, for visuals. So not just ChatGPT, but Dali, um, Stable Diffusion and all those kind of tools that are actually have come into the fold. They can allow you to create graphic content just using prompts. And it's allowed, you know, certain creative people to actually have ideas or start to brace some ideas by actually seeing you know they they visions play out in visual formats essentially so i don't think that it's just seo that's actually utilizing this but i think that other so marketing channels or advertising channels are actually utilizing it quite well i think that for seo the main or the most important thing from my perspective that i see is um, it's all about just basically understanding your processes and then slotting AI into those processes effectively. So, you know, you, you might have a way that you want to carry out a technical audit. You might have a way that you want to carry out a content audit, for instance. And then it's just basically encoding that and then making sure that it's easy for you to start to break that up into sections where you have prompts and you can have AI fill in the gaps of the things that would have taken you a substantial amount of time to to complete. It could be, for instance, like analyzing a large list of alt tags, you know, saying, for instance, which ones should have, you know, different titles based on the landing page content and based on the context of that landing page. So it's it's about analyzing data. It's about um, structuring data. And I think a lot of the work that, that I do as an SEO is, you know, working with large sets of data and it just helps me speed up that process and then think about the strategy on where's the direction of the campaign going effectively. Are there any chat GPT plugins that you're currently using that you'd like to recommend? There's, there's a lot. There's a lot. What I would say is if if you're going to use chat GPT, uh, get the paid version, first of all, if you can get GPT-4 and then basically if you can do that you can enable basically the the advanced data sort of settings and what that allows you to do is it's going to enable you to upload uh, CSV files it's going to enable you to basically do a lot more than what you could with just a standard GPT-3. Now with the 3.5 essentially what you can do there that's that's a bit different is that it does have plugins so the plugins are enabled because what what you have right now is if you're using 3.5 you can either use the plugins and if you use 4 you can't use the plugins and then what happens is with 4 you can ask it to download the output in a csv file for instance so you can start to analyze that and you can bring it into your own sort of workspace However, there are tools such as like uh, Notable, which is a plugin that you can get for 3.5, which is quite good. That allows you to basically do a lot of the data extrapolation, cleansing, and then also as well using diagram for the visualizations uh, within a GPT or the chat uh, interface, essentially. So I hope that answers that question and I hope that was quite clear in terms of those different tools you can use. So. It's, it's really, it does depend what your use case is. If you want to bring everything into Notable, you can use 3.5. But if you want to bring everything into maybe a CSV that you're running in your own workspace, then I'd say use, definitely use 4. If an SEO is struggling for time, what should they stop doing right now so they can spend more time focusing on utilizing AI in their workflows in 2024? Learn how to write prompts. I think that's the only thing I can say. So, so, so basically stop doing everything manually and just <laughs> learn how to write prompts. Yeah, yeah, definitely a hundred percent. Yeah. I think, I think, I think, I think what you need to consider is whatever you're doing right now, start to write a plan around it. You'd write a process. Like what are the steps that you take to actually get to where you need to get to? Think about that. You know, break that out into its in individual sort of subsections. So for instance, you might be doing keyword research. That's the first initial thing that you do when you're doing keyword research. It could be maybe understanding the business, write that down. It could be 
maybe starting with a few head terms, write that down. And then once you've got that information and you've got the data, then try it out with AI, create a prompt, ask it to think like an SEO practitioner. And then once you've done that, your two ways of actually starting your keyword research, give that to AI and then see what the output is. And then just continue doing that continuously across all your, your activities, your tasks, your processes, and then turn those into prompts. And then once you've done that, you've basically automated almost half your work. And then once you've got that, then you need to think about how does this fit into the bigger picture? And why does this matter for the business? Does this generate into sales? Does this generate into revenue, what I'm doing? But also think about this as well, is because now you've actually automated most of that work, all your steps, you can analyze a lot more data and you can tailor your content to specific users as well. Before, when you're creating content, think about this, it was quite generalistic. Now, now you can create all types of variations of content for different users, for different demographics, because you can ask your AI to think in a persona kind of way, and you can create a copy that is written for those specific demographic or users. So think about that. I think that's the most critical thing that the SEOs definitely need to sort of consider when, when, when AI is now into the fold in terms of our workflow. And then in 2025, automate the other half of your work and spend the rest of your life on the beach. I doubt that's going to happen, but yeah, <laughs> that would be <laughs> that would be great. But um, but I, you know, that'd be a good one. But yeah, I I doubt that's going to happen. But I think it's going to open up a lot more possibilities. It just I think it's just in sheer in terms of personalization of what what we see on the internet, what we see on the web, how websites are structured. I think it's definitely going to to help us better organize content information and so forth. So I don't think that it's going to be something that can allow you to, to just sit on the beach and, 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 and enjoy the fruits of your labor. But I think it's definitely going to be something that's going to add, you know, a ton, a ton more opportunities for people. And, and, and just beyond that as well, uh, David, is that one of the things with, with this as well is, you know, as SEOs, we, we do want to create, you know, new maybe campaigns, or we want to run um, a new sort of piece of content marketing. You know, imagine what you can do when you can do good prompt engineering, you can run stuff on, you know, say like stay with diffusion, you can ask it to create different graphics. And then from those graphics, you can bring it into to your Jupyter notebook, for instance, and you can create a, a nice infographic that's interactive. And, and that in and of itself, yes, you maybe you might not be working with a professional graphic designer or a professional engineer from, from the get-go, but you will involve them. But also what this means is, is that you can actually get to that stage a lot more quicker and that will create a much more richer experience for your users because you can get to the step where you can create new ideas and new experiences for users that I think that is going to open up a almost like a renaissance of very unique content experiences online. Whereas before, I think that maybe the thing that was probably holding majority of practitioners back is that they had constraints in resources, they had constraints in skills, and and then now you know AI can allow to you to unlock those skills, unlock those resources where they didn't exist before, and it's going to create a lot more. See Sean Garcia, his SEO partner at CUDA HQ, and you can find him over at CUDAHQ.com. See, thanks so much for being part of SEO in 2024. Pleasure. Always a pleasure, David. I've been your host, David Bain. Get your copy of SEO in 2024, the book, over at SEOin2024.com. <laughs>